Hello and welcome to another episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. This is Berathan of the Citadel Guard of Gondor and we are back in the hole under the mountain ready to continue the legacy of Durin where we left off. So we have brought a Durin's request to King Thorin and now let's hear what the king has to say. I do not like this at all. I do not like this, Berathan. I do not like this at all. Not every dwarf clan is good-hearted, and treacherous wicked dwarves have troubled the long beards throughout history. Our cousins in the Blue Mountains could speak at length about the exploits of the villainous Dorahans, and theirs is not the only name of ill repute. Durin will have his reinforcements. I will command the assemblage of a longbeard army the like of which has not been seen in 70 years. Do you think this unnecessary? I assure you it is not. I will not allow my son to be outnumbered by Shelruka or Stout Axes. The Shelruka have long quarreled with my people, and the Stout Axes could not have remained thralls to Sauron for so long without it affecting them deeply. You remain unconvinced? Go then to Napkun Masaru, the home of Sally the Hure, southwest of the entrance to the Dwelling Halls, and ask him about the Grey Moles. Then you will see the importance of caution, even among dwarves, especially among dwarves. <laughs> Alright. So excited to be back here because, well, um, you, you, you might remember a couple episodes ago, I told you I was having some audio issues and those audio issues affected a couple of, of the videos I, I had recorded. And uh, let me tell you, fixing that was no small task. Uh, it was relatively simple, but still time consuming. So once again, it's been a while since the last I played and uh, I don't know why these last few chunks of the game have been so accidented. I mean, lots of issues and lots of breaks, unintended breaks from the game. So hopefully this time I will be able to at long last uh, play this in one long stretch until the end of the Legacy of Dune storyline. I am very much looking forward to it uh, because, well, I have never played this storyline from start to finish in in one sitting, basically, because I played it as it was released. So there were a lot of intermissions between the chapters and hopefully now won't be the case. And I'm also hoping that way we'll get some extra... Um, Uh, well, I, I will be able to better appreciate the flow of this storyline. Now, I have no idea where I, I must be going. Is this a place? No, that's Mission Recruiter. No, that's not it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know where to go. But let me tell you, it's, it, it feels so good to be back. I've been away from the game for so long that I'm even eager to, to play uh, these Dwarven storylines. told you before, I'm not, not the biggest Dwarf fan there is, by any means. And in fact, I... well... You know, Volume 2 is my least favorite of the epic volumes. And, uh... And I, well, I, I, I wanna check how the Legacy of Durin storyline goes to see how much I like it now, but... But there are storylines that I like better, it's what I'm trying to say, so... Can you please tell me? Where am I? Where am I supposed to go? Napgun Masaru, southwest of the entrance to the dwelling halls of Erebor. I mean, the entrance is where we came from, right? So the southwest, it, it's gotta be through here, but... God! Where exactly is this place? Napgun Mazaru. Oh my god, thank you. But I'm guessing 
This is the home of Stanley the Hewer, longbeard artist and sculptor of some renown. So simple. So simple. Okay. Welcome to Nabgun Mazaru, stranger. Are you a patron of the arts? I must confess to you that my hours are quite full with a number of half-completed works already. If you desire a painting or statue, perhaps to decorate your home, it will be some time before I am able to get to it. With that understanding set forth, what would you like? You tell Stalin that King Thorin did not send you to him with a task but for information on the Grimmauld Dwarfs. The Grimmauld? Why should they occupy his thoughts? Better to forget they ever existed, lest you doubt the decency of your closest friends and your family. But I will not disobey the king under the mountain and, and will speak of them to you. They were ancient dwarf traders in the first stage who rebelled against Turin the Deathless, father of the Longbeards. The leader was named Matsok and he led the Grey Mold in a bloody uprising against Turin. For a time the Grey Mold ruled Durin's holdings, but it did not last. Durin returned and put Matsok to death and the rebellion was quelled. I have been restoring a mosaic of this very event, if you would like to see it. It is over there, against the wall. It was damaged during the residency of Smaug, and once I have finished repairing the stones I will return it to the hall where once it stood. It will once again serve as a reminder that treachery is always rewarded with justice. Ah, this one! Ah, it's already restored, okay. The mosaic depicting the death of Matsuk still needs repair, but the subject is clear. Yeah, I don't see where does it need a yeah, repair. This mosaic already looks uh, complete to me. That mosaic stood in the hall under the mountain with many others for hundreds of years. But the coming of Smaug was not kind to any of them. Many of the stones were lost, and it has been a time-consuming process to recreate the mosaic as it was. But when Stanley the Hero commits to such a project, he sees it through to the end. Long, long ago, before the mountains were shaped as they are now, Durin awoke in the caverns beneath a mighty peak. Durin awoke in the caverns beneath a mighty peak that joined two great mountain rangers of the north. He looked to the peak and gave it the name we have revered ever since. Gundabad, the mountain home. The fathers of other dwarf clans began to awake elsewhere in Middle Earth after that, in pairs, but he had awoken first of all the dwarves, and alone, and we revere him as the father of the Longbeards. We are Durin's folk, and our claim to this land springs from the from he who first awoke beneath Gundabad. In time, other dwarves awoke to accompany Durin and to serve him, but his closest friend was a mighty warrior who helped delve the great holds beneath Gundabad. Legend tells us this friend was also the first dwarf to brew mead, and later ale, but do not think so well of him. He it was who would take the name Mudzog and lead the Grey Molds in rebellion, but that was still some years away. The servants of Morgoth in these days were a constant threat, and together Durin and Mudzog fought bravely to defend the mountain home from them, but Durin grew restless. He desired a place where the Longbeards might know peace, and so he set forth in search of such a haven. He named his dear friend Matsuk the Lord of Gundavat, a decision he would come to regret, and departed the sacred mountain. Do you see the statue there? It was one of my first pieces, and there I say one of my finest. I hope to capture some small portion of Durin's majesty as he set forth on his journey to what would become the site of Treasure Casa Doom. Alright, so here we have the statue of Durin. It looks it looks great. That's true. Great work. The statue of Durin is quite impressive. Stal is more skilled than he is modest. <laughs> That's true as well. I can see you are an astute patron of the arts. Ah, thank you very much, my friend. I can see you are an astute patron of the arts and have a fine eye for detail. I agree that I have done an excellent job of capturing Durin's heroism and majesty. Stal pimps and you. You have clearly won him over. During the Deathless he was called, for he possessed a great span of years, and it seemed he would not die. It was not so, for death comes to all, even to the bitter greatest of dwarves. And yet, we Longbeards believe that Durin comes back whenever the dwarves have need of him, reborn into a new form. It is true, he has come back to us five times during our long history, 
and we therefore count each Durin in a single line, from Durin the first, who awoke beneath Gundabad all the way to Durin the sixth, who perished in Casa Doom to shadow and flame. Some folk believe that the son of King Thorin Stonehill may prove to be Durin the Deathless Reborn, a seventh Durin to lead us into the future. I hope it is true, Veriathan. I have been planning a statue of him, and it would be a shame for that work to come to naught. But I have spoken too long already and should get back to my endeavors. Return to King Thorin with my good wishes. Alright. So, return to King Thorin, we shall. So, it's just a, a short walk, relatively short walk, back to King Thorin, so that he can explain to us uh, what's the reason, why did he want us to learn about Mudsuck and the Grey Moles. Alrighty. My god. This hole under the mountain looks great. I think I had told you that before. I'm not sure how many pictures have we taken of it, but... Well, it's been a couple weeks since last I played, as I told you before, and as such, I am once again amazed by how majestic this place looks. I mean... This is one of the things that you might take for granted, but coming back to the game every once in a while allows you to grasp once again the full extent of the Lotro team, uh, the work done by the Lotro team, and how good a job they have done. So at least the bricks from the game serve that purpose. Stali spoke to you of Mudsog and the Grey Mall Rebellion? Good. Now you see how even good seeming friends can turn traitor, and why it is so important that my son be surrounded by longbeards he can trust. I have commanded a great force of loyal warriors to go with you to join my son in the Grey Mountains. Durin will have his reinforcements. I judge that you have an eye for strength and capability in battle. You have proven yourself a warden of great courage, Breathan, and I judge that you have an eye for strength and capability in battle. Will you measure your fighting prowess against some of the dwarves I have half chosen to join this Longbeard army? I do not question their desire for glory, indeed. Indeed, this dwarf fought bravely and well in time of war, and achieved much honor thereby. But their greatest deeds are many years distant now. These three heroes fought in the Sixth War of Dwarves and Orcs, but that was more than 220 years ago, when Durin's folk last set foot within Gundabad. The Battle of Asanulbisar ended that war, and our losses were too great to pursue the Orcs into Casa Doom. I do not doubt the bravery of these three, but I want to know they still possess sufficient weapon skill to aid my son. Seek out Aknar Broken Tooth, Laggy Helm Biter, and Raidvald Red Ember in the passages to the dwelling holes and to the new loads, and challenge them to battle. If they still desire to join my son in the Grey Mountains after testing their skill against you, then they shall. Yeah, we have already seen some of these dwarves on our on our way to Stali. Uh, I think it was Aknar, the one we we met. Well, not met. We saw him. We are about to meet him now. And once again, do some training. And get the dwarves ready to depart. Back to Skarhalt, I guess. So. Let's get to it. It's very interesting that these three dwarves are survivors of the Battle of Azanulbizar, uh, because the Battle of Azanulbizar will be the next flashback region we get to visit. And to be honest with you, I don't remember if you meet these three dwarfs in there, but I don't think the Lotro team will uh, drop their names now and tell us they, took, they, they were in the war and then not have them in, in Azanulbizar when we get there, so I'm looking forward to seeing them there, I hope. 
Here we have Laggy. You had best prepare for a real fight, stranger. I have not lived so long in idleness. Indeed, I test my combat skill every day without exception. This will be my, my exercise for the day. And mine too. The passage of years has not slowed Laggy Helmbiter one bit. That was a good fight, friend. That is enough for now. Well, thank you for the exercise. Red Pulse, Red Ember, okay. You shall, you shall have a fight then. I may be old, but I remain fierce and eager for battle. I hope you're ready for me. I hope you are too. Ho oh, oh. ho. Well struck, I am content. Red Pulse, Red Ember is still burned for battle. What happened there? Just some lag, it seems. But I am very wary of these kind of lags because I don't want to have the same issues I had before. I, I, I don't want to have any more issues with my recordings at all. A chance to test my skills. I welcome it and promise I will not go easy on you. Me neither. I will hold nothing back. I am defeated. I bow to your combat skill, friend. Akinar Broken Thut remains as eager for battle as ever. And yet again, back to King Thorin. Your dwarves are as good as they can be. H has not slowed them down one bit. But you can rest assured in that regard. Now, as awesome, as amazing as this view is, I'm not so eager on doing this on foot yet again. So yeah, let's ride back to King Thorin. But yeah, here you can see why I saved this for this episode. We didn't have enough time for doing all this on the last episode because I think at some point we're going to get some more history of the Grey Moles as well. So it didn't make sense to me to break these story pieces up. Those three remain eager for battle. Good. I did not really expect otherwise, but I thought it best to make certain. Thank you for indulging me in these, Boryathan. May their greatest heroics remain ahead of them, in service to my son Durin. So, agility, vitality, finesse, okay. I think I'm gonna get that one. But I still wanna check the cosmetics on these pieces. Not that dwarven themed. Uh, I think this is all a man themed the main of the veils, as we'll get to meet them. In not not too too far, I hope. Bring my son this mighty force. Go now to the mountain fortress where waits my son. Bring him this mighty force and tell him his father knows he will bring glory for the Longbeards for so long as there is glory to be had. Oh, what a cool line. That that sounds great. Yeah, the Lotro writers also do a great job as at copying Tolkien's style as well. A warrior of the Shellrook eyes, the large longbeard force with suspicion. And yeah, I, I think you should take a look at all these guys. They are that is an impressive force. By any means. By all means. Why have you brought all these long beards here? I am offended to see so many. The Sheldruka were offered a home in these mountains, but now it seems Durin's folk think to once again stand in the way of that offer. What other meaning can there be for this great force? The son of Thorin Stonehelm thinks to cheat my people of the lands that were promised. Not exactly, but well, you all have a history, you know. I do not suppose my my son Gimli joined the company? 
no, I do not see him. He is far away having a further adventures of his own. A pity. But look at these warriors. Why, even Agnar Broken Tooth has come, and there is Laggy Helm Biter. These are truly great heroes of my people, Baryathan. I fought alongside them at, as an Ulbizar, you know. I was among the youngest to stand at that battle. I am not so young now, am I? What a wonder it is that they have come to aid the prince here in the Grey Mountains. Where is Durin? He will be pleased to see so many fighters. I saw him speaking with Hilar some time ago, and the two of them went away to the northeast. Have they not returned? Gloin's broke creases in thought and with worry. Durin has not yet returned. I do not like that Durin has not yet returned. He did not say where he and Hilar were going, but they were heading northeast when last I saw them, and there is not much in that direction. Unless... A dark shadow passes across Gloin's face. That is the way to the Amble of Winter's Teeth, Baryathan. You do not think they would be going there, do you? We must hurry! Gloin looks around grimly. And bring the army, Baryathan. We cannot be too careful. He is there, but what is he doing? Do you see him down the hill there? At least he's not unguarded, for Hilar stands with him. But what purpose brought them hither with no word to anyone? I find this most peculiar. He appears to be unharmed, may it prove so. There is no cause for worry. Has something happened to the prince, Lord Glowin? I see no hereabout. Has he need of our swords? I see no foe hereabout. Let us hope not. Go down to him, Bariathan, but approach with care. Carefully approach Durin, so I guess... We'll need to... Well, try not to startle him. Durin stares deeply into the eyes, muttering quietly. He said he heard something, Beriathan. Something in the eyes, he said. Or something beyond it. Is it true that the sight of the Amble drives all to madness? That's what they say, but... Please help him, Beriathan. Is someone... Someone there? Beriathan, when, when did you... Arrive? This is... Interstith? What am I doing here? Durin shakes his head to clear it. His eyes were focused upon you and he no longer speaks as if he, as if he were submerged in the deep water of sleep. I remember leaving Skarholt and calling for Hailar to accompany me, but my purpose for doing so has fled. It seems so clear to me, like the great sheet of ice before us, but now it is clouded over and hazy. It is lost to me. There was a voice, that much I do remember. It drew me here. If you had not disturbed me, I might have learned what it wanted. You remind Durin of the need for caution. Primil Frostheart dwells somewhere behind the ice, sealed within the Anvil of Winter's Teeth, and the speech of dragons is known to have a strange power. You take me for a fool. I would have known if this was dragon speech. It kind of had been the voice of Hrimil Baryathan. No, I think this was something else. Many are the dwarves, Longbeard and Sheldrake alike, who have reported a fascination with the Anvil throughout the years. Many of them were kings. Can it be that it is now my turn to accept this kingly aspect? Durin nods to himself, and his face shines as he sees the Longbeard army behind you. Can it, Can it be? You have outdone yourself, my friend. When I sent you to my father for reinforcements, I never expected such a force. Behold the might of the Longbeards! It stands before me! Doubt haunted my steps, but now it is banished! 
Aye, it has been replaced with something else. Where once there was fear, now there is hope! Hope for glory! I heard a voice beyond the ice. It whispered to me of dwarves long dead. It whispered to me of the great deeds they accomplished. It spoke of... Fafargathor. Prince of the Longbeards, do not be a fool! Who said that? Who speaks so to me? Bring him before me! I followed this great array of longbeards here from Skarhal, for I do not like it and did not trust it. I like what I'm hearing from their priest, even less. You need use no force, Beriathan. I am of the Shellrock and fear nothing, neither man or dwarf, nor do I fear kings or princes such as he. Kafargatol has long been the doom of my people. Do not let it become yours as well, Longbeard. Aye, Sheruka. It is not my turn to seek the Citadel. See, this See force. you this force? See you this mighty Longbeard army? I have my eyes set upon a greater prize. Longbeards, hearken to me. I seek no mythical city. The Fargathol is a dream of the Jeruka. Let them have it. The city I desire is more real, and it belongs to us. I speak of the mountain home. I speak of Gundabad. <laughs> Upon this red axe, I swear to reclaim Gundabad. <laughs> we will drive every last orc from the sacred mountain. <laughs> the Longbeard will have victory. <laughs> Gundabad, Gundabad, Gundabad. I do not like it, Beriathan. I fear the prince's words on this day will echo throughout the mountains until they reach on friendly ears. Who can say what evil might be done as a result of this Longbeard's newfound course? Can you not feel the power in the air, Beriathan? My warriors will not know defeat, and soon, yes, soon, we will walk in Gundavad once more and cast out the orcs that feel it. At last, I know my purpose. Finally, my friend. At last, I know my purpose, and with this army of Longbeards at my back, I cannot hope but to achieve it. Gundavad awaits, Beriathan. Agility. Critical rating. Okay, let's take this one. Reinforcements have brought their own weapons, but they will not be enough. My father's reinforcements from the Lonely Mountain have brought their own weapons, but those will not be enough if we are to truly assault Gundavad. Can I ask you to climb the stairs and find the armor in the Skarhald Keep? Bring back some of the swords and axes that are stored there, and we can better supply this fighting force. 
No, I don't like to climb Scarhold. It's confusing. It's a maze. No, why? No. All right, let's do it. Just for you, Durin. But, but just so you know, I, I don't like it. It's just that we can, so that we can get going. Now, what do we have here? Uh, agility, vitality, finesse, critical rating. We would lose some critical rating, but gain a lot of other stats. So I, I will take this. And what about this ring? Agility, vitality, critical rating, and, fis and finesse. I think I can take this one. Yeah. The hit and agility is not that big, but we do earn some extra vitality. So let's say, let, let's take that. And yeah, let, let's equip all the gear before I forget, because that usually happens to me. And uh, no, I, I don't want to <laughs> leave that gear sitting on my bags for too long. Alright, it seems at least this time I was able to get to the top without getting lost. Please let it be let it be so. At least once that I can get to the top of Scarhold without getting lost. Thank God. Thank Edwin Luvatar for his mercy. Oh god, thank you so much. So, the armory, I think it's upstairs. I remember we were turned into the weapons when when Karas got attacked the first time. Is that is that correct? I mean, we, yeah, we were checking the weapons around here. From the western armory. Oh, come on. Yeah. Let me out of this room. Oh, God. Yeah, here, the armory has been picked clean of weapons by persons unknown. Well, what about this one, then? The armory has also been emptied of weapons. Tama calls you to him. You are looking for weapons. Uh, you will find none here. Several parties of my people armed themselves with swords and axes from the armories here and set out into the mountains in search of the remaining dregs of the Frost Horde. It is a proud tradition of the Shelrika to hunt such creatures, but I might have advised against it if I had known an army of Longbeards was soon to arrive. Tell the Longbeard Prince that if he wants those weapons, he will have to wait for my Shelrika brothers to return victorious from their hunt. Now, I don't think Durin's gonna like that. Well, we're gonna tell him. You know, I don't like Scarhalt that much. So, yeah, let's uh, master. Let us master back to the entrance to the stable master. So much easier. Some of the Shellroca have gone into the mountains to hunt the remaining drakes of the Frost Horde. I would say to let them go on good riddance, but Shall we need those we weapons. Gone to hunt drakes? Bah! We need those weapons! You had better go after them, Berethan, and save them from their own foolishness. I want them alive so they can hear my reprimands, but more importantly, I want the weapons they stole. I have spoken with some of their reinforcements from the Lonely Mountain, and many of their weapons are of poor quality. Damage either from this use or entirely too much use. There is no middle ground. Find the Shellroca hunting parties outside Skarhald and bring back those weapons. You hear a horn blowing in the distance east of Skarhald, but it ends abruptly. And that's not... that doesn't sound good. But my question now is... If King Thorin sent the army to reinforce Durin and to keep the Shellroca and the Stout Axes at bay, couldn't he provide for better weapons? 
or is Erebor in such a state that they don't have weapons for their dwarves? That that doesn't seem like it. So I would love to hear what's the explanation behind this. You would expect at least some dwarves would have uh, better weapons, right? Or what am I missing in here? What do we have here? <laughs> so, the traditional drink hunting horn and help us slay whatever answers the call. <laughs> Waits there for you, okay. Yeah, we're hunting drakes, not wolves. The Shadowka cheered the victory. Well fought, let the drakes fear us. Thank you for your help, friend. We will return to Skarhold, but there was another party of Drake Hunters with us, and they have not yet come back. We heard their horn blowing some time ago, but it stopped abruptly. They continued on to the northeast, if you wish to search in that direction. How many worms do we need? Okay, we don't have a, a worm slayer did in the edit Mithrim, it seems. I, I, I don't remember what deeds we are missing. In here. Oh. You found the second Shellrooker hunting party, but they are already slain. Ah, the fools. Why did you have to do this? Instead of staying safe. Alright. So, return the weapons to Durin. Okay. What will he say about them? I wonder. About the dwarves. I know what he thinks about the weapons, but... Will, will he mourn the death of this Shelruka? Is my question. My long beards are going to need every weapon they can get. Thank you for these, Beriathan. My long beards are going to need every weapon in which they can get their hands. And I do not appreciate this Shelruka raiding the armories without notice. That practice must end, or they will face my wrath and that of my long beards. But there is trouble brewing in Skarhal, and I need my most trusted warden to help deal with it before the situation gets worse. Your most trusted warden? Well, you flatter me, Durin. While you were away, a brawl broke out on the upper level. I do not know the precise cause of it, but it seems there is some resentment on the part of the Shilruka and the stout axes here at Skarhal. When I climbed up to investigate, the matter had been resolved, but... Even as Durin speaks, you hear shouting from up the stairs. There. You hear them. It appears nothing was settled after all. You go find these unruly dwarves and get to, but to the bottom of this, Beriathan. Perhaps they will listen to you. If they do not, well... We will sink the Ad Axe when we get there. Imak and Gilpi. See? Imak and Gilpi, where are you guys? Ah, there they are. Aylar, Imak and Venko and Gilpi, okay. Okay. Tell me what's going on, but calm down. Taylor dusts himself off and scowls at Emak. You want to know what happened? He knocked me down when my back was turned! I set towards little more than that and turned to go. That treacherous slime knocked me down when my back was turned. He calls himself a stout axe, but I know what he really is. He spent so long in Mordor, he was a willing servant of Sauron, where I am an elf. I called him a grey mole. What of it? He shows his true nature with such a cowardly strike. 
I wager all the star axes have some grim old blood in them, and it wouldn't surprise me if that Shellrock did too. Yes, some of the grim olds must have escaped during his judgment, and their descendants probably intermingled with the other dwarf families. It would not surprise me to learn that grim old blood might have led to the crimes and failings of even the Dark Hands. I saw it all. The Longbeard called him Grim old Fifth. I saw it all. They were grumbling at each other for a good while, mostly about imagined slights, I expect. But before long, they were each at the full bellow. Hilar called Imak Greymold Filth as he turned to go, and that is when Imak knocked him down. I do not know what he meant by that, but he is fortunate Imak used his fists and not his axe. He might have done worse. I might have done worse. I do not know anything about these grey mobs he mentioned. But his tone of voice was clear. He intended for it to be insulting, so I was insulted. This story of treacherous dwarfs must be some fable of the Longbeards. We Star Axes have our own tales, and no shortage of villains to which I might compare such as he who speak without thinking. He would do well to remember the force of my punch, for if he says anything of the sort to me again, he will face my fists once more, and this time I will hold nothing back. You ask Imak if there is anything that might be done to put the squirrel behind them, and he nods in the direction of Hilar and the interested onlookers. I would accept an apology over a mug of ale if you were to fetch enough for the four of us. I find that usually helps. You remember seeing a keg of ale and clean mugs on this level of Scarhold. Clean enough mug, okay, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, take it. The bar was already full. So yeah, if you say I remember seeing these mugs, I will hold you to it because I don't remember seeing any of those. And where's the keg? South of the Quarreling Dwarves. Okay, once again, I don't remember seeing the keg, but... If you tell me it's south of them... Oh, okay, here. <laughs> Silly me, you feel one of the mugs with ale. After filling the second mug, the ale, the ale cake runs dry. Ah, oh, come on, but why are you... I mean, you want me to get the four mugs, okay. But then you want me to use the two kegs in order instead of letting me decide which one to use first. Like with the armory before. And I don't know, I don't understand why you're doing that now. Happily, this ale cake is nearly full and you're able to pour a third mug. You feel the last of your mugs from the ale cake. I don't know, why, why don't you... This is paddling, there is no other name for it, but I don't understand why. It, what, you pass out the mugs of ale, and the dwarves set aside their differences for now. I mean, was this paddling a way of... Uh, a, a workaround ar around the many uh, players who would be doing this on day one? It's the only explanation I can find. I don't know if that's the case, but... It's still weird. And it breaks all the flow, now that I am the only one doing it in any case. Would be nice. Very unlikely, but nice. All the same, if the devs could rework this. Now that there's no need for it, in case I am right. You were able to smooth things over with the quarreling dwarves. I expected no less. But now there is something else. Isn't there always? Soon I will drive the orcs from Gundabad. But I am no fool. We must prepare. You know I desire to take back Gundabad for my people and it will not be long before I drive the orcs from that sacred mountain. But I am no fool, Baryathan. Too often the hasty stroke goes astray, or so they say. And I know any assault upon the mountain home must be carefully planned. To that end, I sent a number of scouts to the walls of the Langflot, swift and true, and they have now returned. 
but they return with news not from the foot of Gundabad, but from the land to the south. They bring word of a raiding party set loose from Gundabad upon the inhabitants of Mist Hollow and the Floodfields. There are few enough of those, but if the orcs move in those lands, they will trouble any army that seeks to advance upon Gundabad. Someone must deal with this raiding party. Do you know something, Baryathan? I believe we might solve two problems with a single stroke. Why not send some of the troublesome Sheldrick our start access to confront this raiding party? They will realize their true quarrel is with the orcs, and during their absence some measure of peace may return to Skarhold. What were their names? Imak? Bengo? Bring them the news of this task and invite them to adventure on behalf of their people. Okay, so here we have the raiding party. Uh, Hunulf, you might remember, also mentioned this attack up on Limlock, and that's when Grim Baron asked us to go to the Floodfields as well. But, again, Grim Baron and his quest will take you to the Floodfields from the south, and the Legacy of Durin will do so from the north. So, the two storylines will converge at some point, but we are still not there yet. Imak and Benko stop drinking as you approach. Durin inspects the two of us to go in search of a raiding party from Gundavad. Is that what you are saying, Beriathan? I cannot fail to notice that he has charged a stout axe and a shovel cap with this mission, rather than any of the large number of his own folk that have come to Skarhold. I find that most curious, Benko, do you not? I believe the Longbeard Prince is seeking to get rid of us. Durin wants us to face a raiding party from Gondavan. I see the workings of his mind. And I tell you, they are not as subtle as he thinks them to be. If Imag and I prove victorious against these orcs, then the few folk who live along the Lag Flood will be made safer, and if we do not, well, Durin has only lost a stout axe and a shell in the effort. He will not mourn us over much, Imag, will he? In the interest of setting aside our differences, I will do as Durin request if Imag will do the same. I will venture to the walls of Langflot in pursuit of this raiding party with two conditions only. The first is this. You must come with us, Beryathan. You are a close friend of the Longbeard Prince, and he would not send you into danger without reason. If you were to perish, I believe he would be aggrieved. Well, thank you. I guess. So I ask that you come with us in search of this raiding party. My second condition is that Durin sent a Longbeard as well. Why should Stout Axes and Shellorca go into danger when Durin's folk remain behind in safety? Those are my conditions. Bring them to Durin with haste, Beryathan, and see what this Longbeard Prince has to say. Wait, 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 wait. I... yeah. I wanted to get a picture of these dwarves. Well, th their differences are set aside for now. That much is clear, but... Well, I think this is not over yet. Does Pelinor armor still drop? That is a very good question on World Chat. I have never seen those armor drop. And I would love to get some of them because they have great cosmetics. Especially if you're role-playing as a Gondorian. But I don't know what you have to do to make those drop. Most likely you need to run them a cap at, at, at tier 2. But if that's the case, I don't see myself getting the armor anytime soon. They will only undertake this errand if you go with them? This is outrageous! No one else has assumed the mantle of leadership here at Skarhol, and I do so only unwillingly. But if I make such a command as, it, as this, it should be followed, and without question. These dwarves will cause only trouble for me and mine, and if I want them well away from Skarhol, then away from it they shall be, without negotiation. But what is it, Glowing? Have you something to say? Yes, Durin, I have something to say. I have seen a thing or two during my long life, and it has taught me much. I was among the youngest of the dwarves to fight as, as an Ulbisar, did you know that? Every dwarf clan sent representatives to fight in the war, Durin, not just the Longbeards. Even so youthful as I was, I knew that each family fought for more than just their own glory. They fought for the survival of all dwarves. You should not send Shelruka only, or start axes only, in pursuit of this orc raiding party. Neither should you keep your long beards in reserve, for that speaks poorly both of you and of them. A long beard should go, and I volunteer myself. 
Let Veriathan adventure there too, not just because Imac and Benko request it, but because Veriathan is a loyal friend and true, and will see this raiding party destroyed. These are words of wisdom, Durin, and with age and experience they will come naturally to you. For now, let them come from your friends and allies, for they want the same as you and will not lead you astray. Veriathan, will you gather the supplies we will need for an excursion into the wells of Langflot? You will find satchels of footstops, climbing gear, and assorted other supplies two or three levels up in Skarhalt. While you do that, I will tell Imak and Benko that we will be traveling companions, for the good of Skarhalt and all the dwarves. Well, if you are volunteering going, yeah. Well, let us go then. Uh, okay. We have the locations on the map, at least. So we don't need to wander aimlessly around Skarhalt. The sooner we leave this place, the better. You know me. Bag of camping gear. Okay. There we go. Uh, collected the bag of camping gear. Good. I think the climbing gear should be upstairs. Yeah, thank you. Collected the bag of climbing gear. Okay. Back to the stables. And please tell me with these we can leave Scarhill. We have a lot to do. We have an orc raiding uh, party to track. And myself also have a request from Green Baron to fulfill, plus Leothred and his research on Rohirrim history, so I have my hands full and the sooner we can leave Scarhold the better. You found the supplies for our expedition. Very good. At a young age, I learned the importance of preparing for a journey and my appreciation for us of such preparation has only increased with every passing year. You do not want to lack some crucial tool in the middle of the wilderness, I can tell you that. But you know that as well as I, my friend. I spoke to Imak and Benko while you were gathering up the supplies, and they said they will meet us at the pass that leads to the wells of Langflot, far to the west of Skarhalt, east and south of the Broken Rush Gate. They were not very happy about it. They believed their conditions would change Durin's mind and keep anyone from seeking out this raiding party, but it was not so. Speak to Durin and then we will join our new companions. So, are you ready to depart for the Wells of the Langflot? I know very little of that region, but I understand Glowing journeyed there during the Sixth War of Dwarves and Orcs, when he was very young. I am sure he will tell you anything you may need to know of that land. I will await word of the raiding party when you find it, and then we will turn our attention to the place from which it came, Gundabad, the mountain home of my people. For too long has it been kept by the Orcs, but the residency will soon come to an end. One more thing, Periathan. Keep a watchful eye on the stout axe and shell cow with whom you travel. They may not wish you ill, not directly, but they may treat you dishonestly if it serves their purposes. The wells of Langflot are west of here, accessible by a narrow pass in the southern cliffs, east of the Broken Rush Gate. Journey there boldly, but with caution in your eye, and find this raiding party before it can do more harm. Ah, oh, to the Rush Gate, oh my god. It's a long travel. Uh, I think, let's see if we can do that, I mean, just get there, get to the rush gate and, and the wells of black blood, no, that's not the right path, let's see if we can get there, I, I don't think we have uh, enough time today to do much, much more. But, uh, if we can get there, that would be great. God's sake! 
It's just a stupid pillar. And once again, this is not the way. Come on. Let please now be the time. Ah, okay, so I think we'll we'll meet at the rush gate and follow the path of the raiding party into the well. So yeah, the, the, the rush gate is not not the connection to the wells we're looking for, but that's where our search will begin. For God's sake, I don't know what I was so confused with this path now. But let us hope this will be it. I wonder, well, Hunulf died on the last episode, so does that mean that he has phased out of of this place of Skogus would make sense, but I I guess I'll need to check that out later. I'm kind of in a hurry now, you know. I don't fold the materials. I don't think we need those now. there. How far? One kilometer, well, it's close enough. And with the worst state, this distance goes by really quick. there, almost there. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, okay, no, this is the entrance to the walls of Black Flood. That's great. You have met up with your traveling companions near the past to the worlds of Langblot. Okay, as much as I would like to talk to you guys, right now we have run out of time for today's episode, so join me on the next one and we will at long last enter the worlds. For the time being, this has been all on today's episode of Citadel Guard Adventures. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you on the next one. Until then, my friends, stay safe, take care, good luck to you all, and I will see you later.